let's get um, started. Thank you again, um, Brent, for a wonderful introduction to our partnership um, session. Um, we're going to move on to a really neat case study um, that uh, has really emerged just in the last year, right? Well, it's, it's fairly recent, last six months. Um, yeah, sorry about Since the last meeting, okay. <laughs> Three weeks even. Um, but it's a really neat collaboration that I think is important to highlight because it features um, participation from each of the key sectors um, that we engage in this working group. Um, and I believe some of the initial conversations for this project started at the last working group meeting. So again, a neat opportunity um, and the importance of some of these side conversations that are happening. So um, I'm going to welcome um, a joint presentation um, from Stephanie Dobbs at Illinois DOT, um, Michelle Henderson from Ameren Transmission, and Aaron Holmes um, from Pheasants Forever. Um, just briefly as introductions, um, Stephanie Dobbs is the Roadside Maintenance Manager. Um, she's based in Springfield in the Central Bureau of Operations and is responsible for maintenance oversight and policy regarding everything roadsides um, and rest areas statewide um, in Illinois. Uh, Michelle is a vegetation, vegetation supervisor for Ameren Transmission. Um, she has a master's degree in forestry from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And then finally, Erin um, has been working within the conservation field for the last 10 years, uh, mostly on private lands. Um, and she recently moved to Illinois um, to become Pheasants Forever's um, Illinois State Coordinator. So welcome. I need something tall to stand on. Okay, we didn't really um, discuss ahead of time who's going to talk about what, so we're just going to all sort of pitch in as, uh, as the slides come up. Okay, so the scope of this project um, is to clear and restore an overgrown nat native prairie remnant. Um, it's in Champaign, Illinois. Um, this area, let's see, it runs between um, a state highway and Canadian National Railroad, and it has Ameren transmission lines overhead. Um, so it was, it was challenging for the department to keep this up. It was managed pr uh, previously by a student group at the University of Illinois, the Red Bison Group. And they did a great job, but they were always in transition. And when they needed to get in there and do work, they were off doing other research projects and whatever. So it became overgrown. And the further challenge for the department was that we have a T&E species in there. So it really limits what we can do and when we can do it. And in this particular area, we can get in there and do work in February. Well, the department's a little busy with other things in February. And the mowers and those kind of things are long since put away. So that led to more and more and more overgrowth. And what we normally knew about this project was complaints. And as it became even more overgrown, site distance became an issue, drainage became an issue, so on and so forth. So when the conversation started, I was very excited about that. Yeah, and from um, the transmission point of view, um, the brush underneath um, had you know, invasive species and it had tall growing species. Bradford pear was in there and um, we need safety, reliability, we need to keep those lines clear. And it was a no spray, no mow area, so maintenance was an issue. If we had to go in and hand cut every year, it's just cost prohibitive um, to do that type of thing. At one point, the student group, and this was in, in years past, but the student group had tried burning and they set the utility poles on fire. So um, nobody was very keen on anybody trying that. And you know, at, at this point, the, the student group has pretty much faded away and nobody's been maintaining it at all. And since you know, we couldn't go in and spray, we couldn't mow. It was, it was a dilemma as to, as to what to do with it. The, and the railroad, um, so IDOT said, okay, you can burn. Well, the railroad, which is, you know, on the other side, so you got Route 45 and then up there on the embankment is Canadian National Railroad. They, they were not overly excited either <laughs> about yeah. them burning and wanted a, a, a huge liability insurance policy for them to be able to burn. And of course, the student group, that was, that was a no-go anyway. Yeah, and the village of, the, of Savoy wasn't real keen on the whole burning issue either. So, yeah, it was a mess. You can see, I mean, you'll see from our other slides, but um, this is a major intersection right, right here. You can see that it comes around. That's US 45, and that's a Windsor Road on the south side of Champaign. So it's 
the south side of campus, um, really, really busy area. And that stuff was encroaching on the signals and just sight distance in general. Um, so, Stephanie and Aaron and I had met before, but we hadn't really done projects together before. Um, and at our last right away meeting here um, last summer, we started talking about it. And I, you know, talked to Stephanie about it would be really nice if we could work together um, to, to get this area cleaned up. And Iris set us up with um, Carrie Harris from Canadian National. and. Um, Amron and Pheasants Forever and IDOT and Great. Pheasants Forever have been working on partnerships already. So. Michelle, and Michelle and I probably, I think we met each other here, maybe at the very first, the very first right away's Habitat um, working group meeting. And through that relationship, it grew and it grew. And we didn't do projects together. We did projects together, but not together together. So what the heck does that mean? Well. <laughs> she'd call up, and because I knew her, she and, and we from the very beginning we made the arrangement. Okay, Amron, if you're in and you're pruning trees and it's an ash tree, cut it down. I don't doesn't want ash trees, so please cut it down. And it's, so from there it just started, and it got good enough that she could just call me up and say, Hey, I'm at such and such. So before my statewide job, I was a district manager, and I had six counties, so I I knew them fairly well. And she could just call me up on the phone and say, Hey, we're at such and such. There's trees here. Can I take them? And yeah, go ahead. And we'd make the calls and, and get it done. So we knew each other pretty well. At the last meeting, I think, is when I met the pheasants guys, pheasants folks. And um, like she said, uh, Iris hooked us up with Canadian National Railroad, which is a big player because the railroad's right there. It's a very busy line. It's the main line all the way to um, Louisiana, New Orleans, I think, is where it goes. So very, very busy, and they have very strict rules about what you can and can't do. So once we had that key, um, then we started talking to them, hey, we need to get in here. And um, they, by being involved here, knew the importance, and like a lot of us say, on Federal Highway or whatever, they can't have people in there, so they can't do restoration projects. But they're very willing to help with other things like money and flagmen. So they gave us the flagman for two days? Um, we actually only needed them. Well, right. yeah. We, we had the commitment for two days. Day, fl yeah. Flagman for two days at no cost, yeah. which is a lot. Yeah, and a lot of paperwork and everything. If you're going to have a flagman, I mean, there's a lot to it. So when they agreed to that flagman, we're like, all right, we're on. Let's go. And um, took it from there. And, and it was just a lot of phone calls back and forth and back and forth. And what are we going to do? It's a remnant. So we pulled the Illinois Natural History Survey in. Um, to consult with us and what we needed to do for restoration and get a hold of pheasants. Hey, will you take it when we're done? Will you take on the management? And they got us connected with the Champagne chapter and they were all for it. Of course, they, everyone wanted to see it look better, right? Okay, so um, February of this year, uh, we finally got it all together and um, Amron provided the labor and equipment. We mowed the area. Canadian National provided the flagger. So um, we didn't have to worry as much about the trains. He would at least let us know when they were coming. Our part, we closed the northbound lane around 45. Turns out we probably didn't have to. It's four lanes and it's kind of a turn lane right there in that area and a big wide shoulder. And we didn't have to, but we weren't really sure about pitching brush and whatever. And like I said, it's a very busy road. So we closed that whole one mile section. For IDOT, it took two guys and two trucks and some cones, attenuator trucks, and our investment in the project was not much, $1,042 um, in that time. If we had done it just with our forces, about 40000 because we don't have the equipment that Amarin has to bring in there. And quite frankly, it wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have done it. We wouldn't have made that kind of investment. Most of that investment would just be time and labor. We, we don't have that time and labor available in February to get in there and completely clear it. We've done some small clearing, but we couldn't have done what Amarin did in one day. They did it in one day, yeah, a whole I, mile. I had one crew work there with a, a small mower, and it took, them, it took them a full all day long. But still, it was a, a significant cost savings over having to go in and hand cut 
everything that was there. And then you connected with the other part of Ameren, right? Yeah, um, on the other side of the railroad tracks, um, Ameren has a transmission line on the west side, and then on the east side of the railroad tracks, there is a um, 69 kV line and another transmission line. Well, that 69 kV line has, uh, it was just totally overgrown with Bradford Pear, which is, again, a huge seed bank to blow over underneath my lines. So um, I hooked up with the distribution forester for Ameren, and he arranged to have a mowing crew there. And he had his crew there for two days trying to mow down. And he got most of it done, probably about 85% of it done. Um, and so it, hopefully he can keep up with that. And now we've eliminated some of those potential seeds to come back over. So um, that was a good thing as well. This was our job briefing ahead of time. It was uh, quite, the, quite the production because the... The flagger had to have all of us together, and everybody had to do their own part of their job briefing, but just to make sure that everybody was on the same page. Um, the flagger was a really nervous guy. And, uh, <laughs> he was. And everybody, get your hard hat. And, and it, the IDOT folks, you know, our policy, if you're working under a bucket truck or you got a crane overhead or whatever, then you pull your hard hat out. Thankfully, we had them. Right? Everybody's in the truck scrambling for their hard hats because he was not no, you're not walking up here. And we, we were a long way from the project here, you know, nope, get your hard hats on. I'm like, holy cow, so I'm digging around, find a, find a hard hat, broken, if I can get the duct tape, right, get my, get my hard hat together. And uh, he was, he was anxious all day long, and, and rightfully so, because it's a mile-long section, and you saw, you can't see through there. Yeah, and he wanted to be able right. to see all the crews at the same time, which is it's challenging when you have crews on both sides of the railroad tracks, and, you know, one might be at this end, and the other one's, you know, halfway down. And he was just popping back and forth, talking. He'd be able to see you. And, he'd right. be able to see and I'm pretty sure he probably wasn't completely informed on what he would, had in store for him that day, right? Especially with us, right? And then um, how the project was all spread out and whatever. And, and uh, we, we were kind of like, oh, okay, get it done. Just get in there and oh, let's hurry up before he's the railroad not, marshal gets here. Get in there. Right, before the railroad marshal gets here. And we knew where we really needed to clean and we knew where the worst areas was. And thankfully, her guys were great. We're like, okay, get, get down there. And they did, and they got it cleared before he got really, really nervous, because that did happen later in the day. Uh, so these are just some um, in-progress in pictures. Um, and you can see at the, the bottom right how tall some of that brush was. And this, so, that top little one yeah. with the red truck right there just so happens that it's a pretty developed area. So right across the street was an Arby's, and they don't do breakfast. So <laughs> that's where we went and, and landed that morning. Um, so that you can see safely across, and that's where we, uh, so, so the next slide is, go ahead, the next slide is the press coverage, and that's where we're standing. So I dot, um, because we have folks that handle that, and so if you guys know me, probably some of you do, I don't ask a lot of things ahead of time, and I didn't with this project either, and I just, we just did it. You know, I just did it, and then when it was big enough, then I told people, this is what we're doing, and I did get permission to get the press folks there, and we got our PIO hooked up, and they were, um, very willing to get involved because it's a feel-good project and um, do good things, right? That's what we were doing. And they came out. We have a YouTube channel, IDOT does. So they came out and shot that video, and then they worked with us to get um, the local news media. So we got it on the news that night, um, and it ran, a, it ran in all three, the 5 o'clock, the 6 o'clock, and the 10 o'clock. And... So my son and I were glued to the TV to see what happens. And we weren't the lead, right? We were the second. And we got upstage, and I can't be, I can't be angry. City of Decatur Park District was doing a project on clearing bush honeysuckle and a volunteer project to clear bush honeysuckle at the park. So I'm like, well, okay. They, you know, they beat us out for the number one coverage. But we got them out there, and uh, I think we'll play a video when? At the end? Um, hopefully we'll get the video. Well, hopefully you'll get to see the, the YouTube video at the end. Okay, so lessons learned. <laughs> so, have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> Seems really good. More than just, hey, let's do this, right? Yeah. Um, these are the things that we learned, and uh, we didn't have the right kind of railroad flagman out there, and that was probably some communication problems. We didn't have a sit-down meeting. Um, we didn't really know each other's safety rules like the hard hat. We didn't know that ahead of time. Um, job directory would have been really a good idea. Phone numbers. I mean, we had, I had her yeah. number, and she had her guy's numbers, and I had some people's numbers, and so we're just constantly... The flagger would call me, yeah, and... Yeah. playing that game. So, a little more forethought would have been... We'll, we know now. 
right? This is probably the most important thing that we learned that day, was what we need to do better the next time. Right. We all have our own vision in our minds of what we wanted, um, and to make that happen, I think, um, was a little bit more challenging than we anticipated. Right. And it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained. Well, there's always an issue. <laughs> but if you have, you know, planning in advance for things like this, you have to plan weeks in advance to arrange for a flagger and to, mm -hmm. you know, to have for road closures and that type of thing. Um, you just can't predict what the weather's going to be in that amount of time. And then for us, too, it's winter. So for a while, snow was forecasted, and I got really anxious because those guys that provided the traffic control and the trucks would have been busy. And, you know, that would have probably stopped the whole thing. Okay. Benefits. Great. Benefits have been great. Like I mentioned, we were working together already. Um, IDOT needed it cleared. We don't really care about the power lines, right? In fact, I didn't dream how many power lines were even there. I lived there until I saw that picture of the job briefing, and I was putting this thing, holy cow, there's a lot of lines there. You just don't, you don't see that. And I've learned, because my partner right here is very willing to clear the stuff for me under those lines, I've learned to look up. And that's what I've told my roadside statewide, look up and look down. Look up if you've got power lines and if you've got pipelines and whatever underground. Guess what? Those people want that cleared too. So we've, the department's been able to capitalize on that. And then Pheasants Forever, God bless them, right? They, uh, <laughs> they, they've been fantastic. They've been fantastic um, partner in helping us. They, they know. They know how to plant the stuff. They know how to get it to grow. They know what to plant. They know where to plant it. And they're willing to do it. Yeah, from our from Amra's point of view, I, I have tree trimming crews. We can we can cut things down, we can mow the brush, but what do we do with it afterwards? We don't have the knowledge and we don't have the crew ability and the seed access and that type of thing. So um, that's where Pheasants Forever comes in, and you know, Amron has a partnership with Pheasants Forever now. Yay! <laughs> Finally, formal one, <laughs> and um, that is something that we really want to. Um, to work with and and use their knowledge um, to, to help us maintain these areas after the fact and to get good and proper seed put in place. Okay. Major benefit uh, is obvious. Um, I'm not going to read all that. It took me probably putting the slide presentation together. That was the what took me the longest was to come up with all of that. Um, we did the right thing. In the end, it benefited all of us, but it benefited that area, the community, right? Um, and everybody wants to know about this project. How did that work? How did you get together? How did you this? How did you that? So out of that, these multiple other successful, hopefully, projects have grown. And the more we work together, you know, now I can, you know, if I see something else in my territory, I think, hmm, there's a state highway. That's a good thing. Absolutely. Instead of thinking, oh, great, it's a good you know, state highway. Now oh, i got to deal with yeah. IDOT. You know? Oh, Amron. Amron's yeah. out there making Y trees, you know, and the claw trees. Man, right. quit so, that. Yeah. <laughs> so now, you know, we, we can talk and say, you know, maybe we can come up with something that is, is a much more workable solution for both of us. So... These are the afters. These Remember the afters. what it looked like? That's the sign where the little skid steer was. Well, it's not little, but where the skid steer was. Now it's clear. For the most part, most of the brush is out. They still have an open permit, and Amron will go back in and do the spot treatment. Um, yeah, that brush pops by, back like crazy. So. It, it looks good. It looks really good. Yeah. They got most of it out. Um, and really, the, the equipment that they used um, took care of most of the brush there's not there wasn't a lot left over that even needed to be cleared away or anything like that our crews came in later and and finished up the ditch clearing along the route right there so we've gotten all the cross the road um, culverts opened up so that'll make everybody happy on the other side of the road too before they couldn't even find them and I, I looked at this last <clears throat> week and the brush is about foot and a half two feet tall now so We'll be going back in next week and just spot treating the brush that's coming up. And then we're going to kind of wait to see what happens, and then Pheasants Forever is going to take a look at it and yeah. see what comes back. The seed bank is there, in the, I, I believe, in the, in the areas where we had cleared it before, and then just walking around up in there, there was stuff there. It was surviving. It just wasn't very happy. 
this is what we hope it'll look like. <laughs> <laughs> See, and now we're done. Look how nice it is. Isn't that great? We did, we did, we moved the road and the railroad. We took those out. <laughs> So this is a, this is the side of um, obviously what we projected this will look like hopefully, um, but this is when we do plantings. Um, this is this is kind of one of the typical mixes that we use, and so I just put it up there to dazzle you with its wonderful beauty and recognize <laughs> where we're trying to go with this. Um, the best part about this partnership was these ladies had this all taken care of, and I just showed up and got to stand <laughs> on stage here with them, and so all the hard work was done. Um, but the beauty of this is that we, from the lessons learned, we have a long-term plan for this. So the red bison site in particular is going to be managed. It has a long-term maintenance plan with the local chapter. That was the basis for us forming partnerships, our now formal partnership with Amron, and we're working on a partnership with IDOT. So somebody brought up linear connectivity of habitat yesterday, and that's the intention of this. And we're trying to create a literal roadmap with rights of ways for monarch butterflies and other pollinators throughout the entire state which, as it turns out, is a really, really long state, <laughs> as I've learned as I have to drive through it now, because <laughs> I'm just, it never ends. Um, and uh, the, the cool thing is we've kind of got all the sectors uh, involved in our partnership involved in this project now, too. So um, we're going to focus on Ameren transmission lines, and we're going to focus, but not limited to, um, Route 44 and Route 66 corridors with IDOT. What did I say? 45. Sorry, 45. Um, <laughs> And then the whole state will look like this at one point. By, by next year, probably. Right. <laughs> so, okay, so I think we're going to, yeah, so our next steps, um, just, just build on our partnerships. Um, and Amron and Pheasants Forever have a, a project that we've been working on for the past year. And uh, the state, yeah, in the state of Illinois with Pheasants Forever, um, statewide since September, when we had our statewide summit, and to credit to, to the district roadsides because they've gone berserk with this project and at light speed for IDOT. We've probably either committed to or have already done roughly 250 acres of right-of-way projects, um, most of them with pheasants. And um, that's a lot. That's a lot for IDOT in one winter. This is us. So, right? I think yeah. everybody knows us so, and no. we're on the contact thing. So we're do you want to take a couple questions? Sure. Any questions? We'll Sorry, could you not hear me? <laughs> so given that there were teeny species out there, what did the process look like for getting approval to mow? Hibernates. So we were able to get in there in February, and we just ran that. I ran that through my district, district um, environmental coordinator, and the permit and everything all went through him. So it was it was a time it was a time of year thing for that location. Anybody else? Yeah. Hi, I just had ooh, not used to microphones. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the role of pheasants forever in the project? Are you helping like with the long term maintenance, or kind of what's the role you're playing there? Um, yeah, so we are working with our local chapters to pair up for projects that are in their areas. And um, so in this particular case, we didn't need to seed it, or we, or we haven't seeded it yet, so we're going to do the restoration work and see what species come back, because it was seeded quite some time ago for the original it's project. Maybe. Oh, it is. It's maybe. Maybe. Okay, it's a remnant. Um, and in other places, um, that's something we're working through with both situations. So it depends on the local chapter. It depends on what the district manager for IDOT needs. So they're involved monetarily, they're involved in actually doing the work, potentially purchasing the seed or actually doing the seeding themselves. Um, and then they'll be working with the district manager or with the uh, Ameren to decide what the long-term maintenance of the site will be. Obviously, we like to burn things as habitat enthusiasts, which is not always copacetic. We're done. We're done. <laughs>